beautiful day outside. And I think we have some great things to talk about. I'll start by discussing the Federal Reserve, as you know. It just happened uh, minutes ago, but to me it uh, makes me very happy. And I want to congratulate the Federal Reserve. Uh, for starters, they've lowered the Fed rate from what it was, which was 1 to 1.25, and it's been lowered down to 0 to 0 0.25 or 0.25. So it's 0 to 0.25. That's a big difference. It's, a, it's a, quite a bit, about a point. And uh, in addition, very importantly, the Federal Reserve is the uh, are going to be purchasing $500 billion of Treasuries and $200 billion of mortgage-backed securities, and that number can increase. Uh, but they're going to start with that, and uh, that's really good news. It's really great for our country. It's something that uh, uh, we're very happy. I have to say this. I'm very happy. And they did it in one step. They didn't do it in four steps over a long period of time. They did it in one step. And I think that people in the market should be very thrilled. And that brings us uh, we're the strongest country in the world by far, financially and every other way. And that brings us in line with what other countries are. Uh, they're actually, they actually have negative rates, but look, we got it down to potentially zero. So that's a big step, and I'm very happy they did it. Um, and you will not hear anything bad about me unless it's about a month or two from now. So uh, I congratulate the Federal Reserve. I think it's terrific. Just came out just as we spoke. I wasn't going to mention Federal Reserve or anything else, but this came out as we were walking up. Uh, I want to thank the people at Google and Google Communications because, as you know, they uh, substantiated what I said on Friday. Uh, the head of Google, who's a, a great gentleman, said uh, called us and he apologized. I don't know where the press got their fake news, but they got it someplace. But as you know, this is from Google. They put out a release and uh, you guys can figure it out yourselves and how that got out and I'm sure you'll apologize but uh, it would be great if we could really give the news correctly it would be so so wonderful uh, I just had a phone call with uh, very impressive people the biggest in the world in the world of stores and uh, groceries and all and I'll give you the names uh, Dave Clark Whole Foods Mark Klaus CEO of Campbell Soup Company Brian Cornell, CEO of Target. Randy Etiker, Chairman and CEO, President of Hy-Vee. Jeff Hammerning, CEO of General Mills, great company. Kevin Burakan, President and CEO of Cisco. Craig Jelinek, CEO of Costco. Todd Jones, CEO of Publix Supermarkets. Donnie King, uh, Tyson Foods, David McLennan, Chairman CEO of Cargill, Rodney McMullen, CEO, Chairman of Kroger, big company, Doug McMillan, CEO of Walmart. He's been fantastic. Doug was here, as you know, on Friday, and he watched the market go up 2,000 points. On Friday, it went up 2,000, almost 2,000 points. Uh, Dard Vasso, CEO of Dollar General Corporation. And uh, Vivek Sankaran, President and CEO of Albertsons. So these are all phenomenal companies. These are great companies. We had a long conversation with them. And uh, they've, uh, they're going to work uh, 24 hours round the clock, keeping their stores stocked. I would like to say that people shouldn't go out and buy. We're going to all be great. We're going to be so good. We're going to do what's happened with the Fed is phenomenal news. What's happening with all of these incredible companies is phenomenal news. Uh, but you don't have to buy so much. Take it easy. Just relax. People are going in and they're buying more. They, I remember, uh, I guess during the conversation, Doug of Walmart said that they're buying more than they buy at Christmas. Relax. We're doing great. It all will pass. Uh, the folks uh, that we spoke to, uh, they've done a fantastic job. They're going to meet the needs of the public. They're going round the clock if they have to, and they're committed to uh, the communities where they're serving and which they serve so beautifully and have for a long time. And 
they're buying a lot of additional things to sell. But again, they, they actually have asked me to say, could you buy a little bit less, please? I think, thought I'd never hear that from a retailer. All of them are working hand in hand with the federal government as well as the state and local leaders to ensure food and essentials are constantly available. And they'll do it. There's no shortages. We have no shortages other than people are buying anywhere from three to five times what they would normally buy. It's going to be there for a long time. We're doing numbers, and there's a pent up demand that's incredible. When this passes, when this goes through, you're going to see numbers, I, th I think, I predict. I guess I'm allowed to predict just like Wall Street people are allowed to predict, and they're pretty much in agreement. You're going to see there's a pent up demand like like a lot of people, including me, haven't seen before. But this has to get through. Uh, they know they're getting through the crisis and will require an all-of-America approach, and that's very important. They're committed to remaining open during this crisis, totally open. They have to stay open. Those stores have to stay open. They supply our country. Our supply chains in America are the most powerful in the world, and they're all working very hard. They're working around the clock. And uh, the stores are stocking up at a level that's beyond Christmas time. And uh, it's, uh, it's great. It was very reassuring speaking to these people. They have it totally in hand. There's no need for anybody in the country to hoard essential food supplies. They said to me, could you please tell them, just go and buy, enjoy it, have a nice dinner, relax, because there's plenty. But you don't have to, you don't have to buy the quantities, uh, because it's hard to refill the stores on a basis as rapid as they're refilling them. And uh, we are using the full power of the federal government to defeat the coronavirus, and we will do whatever it takes, and we're doing, I think, really, really well. Uh, a lot of good things are going to happen. I want to thank all of the people standing behind me. You know, they, these are phenomenal people, and uh, we have some of them right over here. But the people behind me have been working uh, round the clock, and they're doing an incredible job. Uh, we see what's happening. We see what's going on in other countries. We're looking uh, at, uh, we're learning from watching other countries, frankly. This is a, this is a very contagious, um, is a very contagious virus. It's uh, incredible, but it's something that we have uh, tremendous control of. I think very important to young people, people of good health, uh, um, and groups of people just are not strongly affected. Uh, elderly people that are not well or not well in certain respects, are uh, really a very a dangerous group. We have to watch them. We have to protect them very much. We have to really watch over them and protect them because they are very vulnerable. And with that, if it's okay, I'm just going to go and make some calls. I'm talking about Federal Reserve. I think it's a tremendous thing that took place just now. I didn't know I would be surprised on a Sunday. I don't know if that's ever happened on a Sunday before, but I would think there are a lot of people on Wall Street that are very happy, and I can tell you that I'm very happy. I didn't expect this. And uh, I like being surprised. So uh, our vice president is doing an incredible job. He's going to take over. And I will see you probably tomorrow. Thank you very Mr. much. President.